Apple Arcade. This is one of several attempts by Apple to really captivate on their services department. Now that hardware is finally hitting a peak and the whole smartphone market is beginning to get saturated. It's a really smart move by Apple so that they have a consistent stream of income coming elsewhere from their loyal customers. Make no mistake, Apple is aggressively trying to enter into many spaces that are already loaded with fierce competition. You have Apple Arcade now wanting to compete with the already well established PlayStation Now and Xbox Game Pass and also with their Apple TV Plus subscription service set to rival the likes of Netflix and Disney Plus. Today though, we're going to be taking a look into how to sign up for Apple Arcade, the ins and outs about it, the monthly cost, and so much more. Without wasting too much time, let's hop right into this one. So today, September 19th, 2019, Apple officially rolled out Apple Arcade and for such an attractive price in over 150 countries for iOS and will be available for iPadOS, tvOS, and macOS later this fall. For months, we were left on edge wondering, ever since Apple Arcade was showcased earlier at WWDC, would it be $19.99? $9.99? I was extremely shocked when Apple announced Apple Arcade would be just $4.99 a month for the entire family. That covers six family members, provided you have family sharing on. Additionally, Apple is generous enough to give us a free month of Apple Arcade to see what all the hype is about. How nice of them. All things considered, you can be the biggest Apple hater ever, but you have to admit, the pricing is spot on and for just the price of a Starbucks coffee, you can get a plethora of different titles ranging from adventure, puzzle, or strategy games right at your fingertips. This could be great for parents and a huge cost effective way to keep children entertained, or ladies, a good way to keep your husbands entertained as there are so many titles to choose from, ranging from super simple fun games to complex ones that really pick at your brain. However, that does lead me to my next point. If you thought Apple Arcade is a replacement for your AAA, PlayStation, Nintendo, or Microsoft titles, you'd be completely wrong. While some of these titles are fun, sure, they do tend to be a bit repetitive and some titles even feel eerily similar to others, almost like the same game with different skins and slightly different game mechanics. There are a few blunders in the launch collection that make you wonder who even approved the development of the game, but the majority are bangers and are super addicting. You won't find any massive multiplayer games here either like your Call of Duty, Fortnite, or Clash Royale, and I feel that this is where Apple Arcade is truly lacking. Imagine having huge multiplayer games like the aforementioned ones with leaderboard incentives for bragging rights or just to have some all out fun with the Brodies. If Apple Arcade implemented huge multiplayer games in the future, I'd say the audience and ultimately money is there. While the selection is broad, these titles really are exactly what you'd expect, your typical handheld mobile games which are great at wasting some time when you're bored or say waiting in the waiting room before you see the doctor or when you just have some extra time on your hands and want to game a bit. I do feel this will disrupt the way the App Store and indie developers pump out their games for the App Store and could have some dire consequences in the future depending on if Apple Arcade kicks off or not. It's kind of scary how similar to what happened to the music industry in which everything went the streaming route. An all-you-can-eat buffet for music like Spotify or Apple's very own Apple Music for one low monthly fee except with video games. This could be the beginning of the same for Apple's mobile gaming ecosystem if Apple Arcade manifests itself into something greater. Think about it this way, with the huge incentive to play hundreds of games all for $4.99 a month, why would you waste your time with one game that's $3.99 and may or may not have in-game purchases that make you spend even more to advance in the game? But I don't know, it might just be me and I might be completely wrong. I'm totally open to discussion and would love to hear what you guys think. Definitely drop your thoughts below. One of the selling points about Apple Arcade is there is no DLC to speak of. You get the complete finished game and there are no in-app purchases that nickel and dime you after every failed attempt. Reminds me of those games you see on your Twitter or Facebook timeline, you know? The ones that claim if you reach level 83 you are illegally skilled or some dumb shit like that. But upon downloading said game, it is infected with ads or in-app purchases, pestering you more than your desperate ex who's trying to get back with you. 
lingers, man. These 100 plus exclusive games are available to you on your iPhone and soon your Mac, your iPod, your iPad, and even your Apple TV so you can game to your heart's content whether at home or on the go. Signing up is extremely easy. Just make sure you have a valid Apple ID and update your iPhone to iOS 13 and head over to your App Store. Find your game section or more specifically find your arcade tab at the bottom and you will find a free trial to try out. Similar to signing up for Apple Music or News Plus, you'll just have to confirm stating that at the end of your trial period, you will be billed periodically every month and once you accept, boom, Apple Arcade is unlocked to you. So many games, so where to start? One of my personal favorites at launch was definitely Skate City. It brought back so much nostalgia of the endless hours playing Skate 3 and man was it fun. It has some super simple controls. Just tap to move forward and flick away in a variety of directions to secure an ollie or maybe even a kickflip and the soundtrack is super gnarly. Of course it doesn't have those PlayStation 4 type graphics but even then the visuals are great and it's a great way to escape and ease your mind and just have some fun playing a nice video game. Another one I really liked was Overland, which is a turn-based game, kind of like Pokemon, but the twist here is that it's all about survival. It's like The Walking Dead meets the Pokemon franchise. The game throws you in an abandoned parking lot and you just ran out of gas, and now you must fend for yourself and figure out how to survive. Because it's turn-based, you must choose wisely whether you want to recruit people to join your roving band of survivors or search through places and scavenge for supplies. You must eat to survive, fight to survive, and play it smart to survive. Do anything you can to see another day. It's challenging, it's fun, and passing each level is an accomplishment in its own right. A true survival game and one I'm sure many people will enjoy. Lastly, for all my card lovers who love a battle of wits, Card of Darkness is the perfect way to make your brain think in a more strategic way. It's like a mashup of RuneScape and Solitaire having some components reminiscent of our favorite RPGs. Each game begins with several choices. You have cards face up with each one representing something different like weapons or gold or health. Each one does something different and it's up to you to fight your way through and level up to be better equipped to make your pathway through a ton of obstacles set to bring you to your virtual demise. The game is super addicting and I am personally a fan of the art style. It just fits the game so well and is at times like a very tough game of chess, making you think three moves ahead to have a strategic advantage and foreshadow and be prepared for any setbacks. Overall, I think Apple Arcade is a fantastic value and why not try it out for that free month? I'm excited to see what games Apple will release in the future and despite the minor complaints like no crazy fun multiplayer games and a couple of games that are complete bore fests, Apple Arcade is super fun for such a cheap price. And isn't that what we all want? Well guys, if you found this video useful, make sure you subscribe to my channel with bell notifications and stay tuned for my official iPhone 11 Pro review. Catch you all later.